I've been wanting to join the Navy ever since I was a kid. Since 2017 to be specific, so about 7 years. Back in December 2023, I was in the process of applying. My dad and I went to our local recruiting office, and they told us that I needed to attend the thing called MEPS before I could continue processing. Side note, MEPS stands for Military Entrance Processing Station, so we scheduled a time for me to go later that month. They explained how I'd go for a couple of days, take my abs out the first day, stay in a hotel for the night, and then take my physical assessment the day after. I initially thought this meant I'd have to be able to run within a certain amount of time and do so many push-ups, so I ended up training every day after school for about a week or two until I learned that the physical was just an evaluation of my health and not of my strength, so that was definitely news to me. Eventually the 27th rolled around, and it was time for me to go to the MEPS. I was packing my stuff that Wednesday morning, and I was seriously considering bringing my Adorabat plush with me. Just so you know, I sleep with my stuffed animals every night, and considering that I was about to go into a military environment for the first time, I really wanted the emotional support. I literally had the text written out and everything for the chief, and my thumb was hovering over the send button, but I finally decided not to do it because taking a stuffed animal to the military station clearly just didn't seem right, and I would later thank myself for this decision. After I finished packing my bag, my mom took me to the recruiting office, where my recruiter then took me and one of the applicants of the MEPS. We went through a screening, then proceeded to drop off all of our belongings before entering the test room. Obviously, I can't disclose what was on the test, but I was in the room for about 4 hours without any breaks. Finally, I finished my ASVAB, and I got a score of 83 out of 99, which I was very happy about. With a score like this on my hands, I could basically apply for most, if not any, job in the Navy. The other applicant who I had ridden with told me that they were leaving, and I forget why, but this meant that I'd be alone for the rest of the trip. It became pretty late in the evening, and by this point, I was the last applicant leaving the MEPS. I don't remember why it took me so long to finally be cleared to go, but I had the entire bus to myself on the way to the hotel, so that was pretty awesome. Once we got there, I spent like 10 minutes trying to figure out where I was supposed to go next, and I finally decided to go to the dining hall and eat some dinner. They were serving pasta and chicken with a side of green beans and garlic bread. I hadn't eaten lunch that day, so even though I could tell that the food had been sitting in the warmer for some time, it still tasted amazing. Plus I got to eat a cookie afterwards. Finally, I made my way to the hotel room and got settled in. Also, I had learned about 2 hours before this that I would need to wake up at 3am the following morning for my physical assessment, so I was extremely cautious of how long I was staying up that evening. I called my dad to tell him all that had happened took a shower, greeted my roommate who didn't end up arriving into the room until about 9pm, then went to sleep. Again, I'm glad I didn't bring any stuffed animals because not only would I have been embarrassed around my roommate, but I wouldn't have even gotten time to appreciate them since I had to go to sleep as soon as possible. I finally woke up, and we had until 3.30am to meet everyone downstairs and eat breakfast. We lined up and had to check into the dining hall by giving back the key cards for our rooms. I got myself a light breakfast, with just scrambled eggs and a sausage. And once we were finished eating, we had to line up into two lines down the hall, and a sergeant briefed everyone on what would be happening next, followed by a check to make sure that there are an equal number of applicants in each line that would be heading into each bus. To do that, they had us count down the line, with the person in the front starting at 1, followed by the next person in line saying 2, and so forth. I know that this isn't really a stressful situation, but I was seriously locking in to make sure that I wouldn't accidentally lose count or say the wrong number. Some other applicants were either caught off guard or intentionally said the wrong number, so I just gave them the look, and then proceeded to say my number. Which I did. Although I don't remember what my number was, I do remember saying without any issues whatsoever. Finally, we boarded the bus and headed back to the MEPS. We arrived at about 5am, and we had to line up into formation again to be briefed as to what was going to take place inside the building, as well as what was prohibited and the consequences if anyone were to do the said act. Now, keep in mind, it's 5am during the winter, and we were standing out there for about 20 minutes before finally being able to enter and get scanned. And I'm a skinny California boy, so temperatures of 50 degrees Fahrenheit is what I call cold. I mean, I was out there with my teeth chattering and fingers tensing up. Something that the last I had experienced was on an astrophotography trip to the middle of nowhere, which is a story I'll cover next time. We went through the scanners, dropped off our stuff, and then went into the first of our testing rooms. Here, we take a breathalyzer test, then head off upstairs to do the other tests. There was a blood pressure test, a blood test, a vision test, a hearing test, but there's one in particular that I would like to explain in detail, and that is the urinalysis test. This was the third test I'd visited that day, and I would revisit it two more times later that day. You'll see why. In case you don't know, this is the test where you have to pee in a cup but what I didn't know is that this was far different from any other urinalysis I've ever done before. One of the staff members managed the line, and instructed that only five testers can enter at a time. So I was waiting in line, and I watched one of the groups in front of me enter the restroom. This group consisted of a kid who seemed to be well known amongst the other testers. Maybe they went to the same school, or knew each other from JROTC, I don't know. He went in there all confident and making jokes, and so I waited. Finally the door opened, and he was the first one to walk out. He said to his friends, Bro, I couldn't pee. I didn't expect it to be like that. Yeah, dude, they have you pull your pants down. It was so weird, dude. I heard everything he was saying, and I just thought, I'll be fine. How bad could it possibly be? I've done these before. And so I entered with my group. We lined up behind a strip of tape in front of the urinals, and the staff member briefed us on how it was going to work. 
I was already confused as to what was going to happen, but I was just focusing on making sure that I could still pee. Alright, the point of this test is to make sure that none of you show signs of drugs or medical conditions in your urine. You will walk towards the urinal in front of you, and when I give the command, you will drop your pants and deliver the product. If you fail to deliver the product, you will be sent home and instructed to come back and try again in three days. I was freaking out. Not just from the insanity of the way the test was going to be conducted, but the pressure of making sure not to not pee. He gave the command, and we each dropped our pants and undergarments down to our ankles. Then he instructed us to deliver the product, and I stood there frozen. And before I knew it, I was the only person still standing in front of the urinal. This meant that everyone behind me could see my bare behind and my pitiful struggle to try and muster up some piss. The guard told me to pull up my pants and try again later. He said that I should keep drinking water and visit the other stations before coming back to try again. And so I did. I drank from the water fountain, completed my hearing tests, and came back to the urinalysis station. It was the same format as the first one, so I won't bore you by restating the details, but what I will tell you is that I failed this one too. I've now been publicly embarrassed in front of eight of the other testers, and it felt even less likely that I'd ever be able to pee. I chugged down a bunch of water and did my vision tests, and right as we were about to start, I finally felt the urge to pee, and I was so relieved. I finished my vision tests and did a pee-pee dance in front of the bathroom until the guard finally came back to test me and one other guy who also failed during his other attempts. I actually preferred this way more since we kind of bonded over our common ground of not being able to pee, so being next to this guy was a lot less stressful. Finally, I completed my urinalysis tests and I left feeling great. I went to do my blood test, then all that was left was my prostate exam. I already knew what this was going to be about, you know, but that wasn't the problem. I was in the waiting room, and since I took so long to finish the urinalysis, I was basically the last guy in line. I didn't think of it too much at first, that is until I realized it took about 15 minutes for each person to be examined, and there were roughly 35 people ahead of me. So I sat in the waiting room, having nothing to do but watch the TV for about 4 hours, no phone, no food, and no clock. As a Gen Z, to someone who's conditioned to always have that stimulation on standby, this was a nightmare. I was bored out of my mind, and by the time I was called in, I had already watched two and a half movies in full. Anyways, I did my exam, and I was finally cleared to go. My recruiter then picked me up and took me home. About one week later, my recruiter told me to give them a call when I had the chance, so I went ahead and called them as soon as I got out of school. I had no idea what this was going to be about. Whether it was good or bad news, I just calmly listened. They said that I was dinged for my history of petite mal seizures, despite them having gone away almost three years before. Normally, this wouldn't be an issue since the Navy would just send a pink slip for my recruiter to fill out and I'd be clear for service, but no pink slip was ever sent. We hung up soon after, and I was pretty much under the impression that I wouldn't be able to enlist in the Navy, but I still had a chance for the NRTC, so I wasn't really all that upset because the NRTC is what would be paying for my college education. Then a few weeks went by, and my dad picked me up from school and told me that he received a call from my recruiter. Trying to break the news to me softly, basically, I was not only rejected from the Navy, but also revoked of any good chance at getting accepted to the NRTC. And yeah, I fell into a state of depression for the remainder of the week. At this point, everything that could have gone wrong, went wrong. I now needed to find a new path for college and a way to pay for it. At the time of recording this, I still don't know exactly what I'm going to do, and it's really scary. So, moral of the story is, always have a backup, because you never know when life's going to bite you in the ass and make you rethink everything you had planned. So that's it. Thank you so much for your time. This is the first time I've ever animated something like this, so it's really cool because you can actually see my progression from the beginning of the video all the way towards the end. This episode took me about two months from start to finish, but I learned a lot over that time, so I'm hoping it won't take as long for the next one. I hope you enjoyed listening to my story, and again, thank you for your time. I'll see you in whatever comes next. Have a great rest of your day.